Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 62. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, <laughs> here we go. Class A North American tour. For, uh, we're taking the Ford RS200. <laughs> Starting off with Sedona Raceway, Sunset Peninsula, Road Atlanta, New York Circuit, and then Laguna Seca. <laughs> what the fuck? Ferrari makes me want to shoot someone in any game with customization. Customization. <laughs> Yeah, for anyone wondering why we were laughing at the start of that, we've just taken the piss that Lexus is Spanish. <laughs> okay, this thing is quick. I made a good choice to pick this. It's not quick when you go through there, though. Um, yeah, so... Obviously, Formula 1, Formula 2, all these companies, like Formula E... Formula E has nothing to do with Formula 1. Um, they are completely separate. I think. I'm pretty sure they are, because they're all at different time frames. They're all... I am 99% sure that Formula E has nothing to do with Formula 1 in terms of the two companies. However, they are both governed by the FIA. Same with WRC. WRC has nothing to do with Formula 1, but they're governed by the FIA. Now, I genuinely think the FIA are getting the, the heat. Because of the fact that the FIA are the ones that are making these decisions. Um, but I think they're under pressure by Formula 1 to do make these decisions. Because, in all honesty, Formula 1, tomorrow, could drop the FIA. They could say, we are no longer affiliated with the FIA. We will get our own governing body. Whatever. And they could quite easily do that. Because they aren't linked. They're, they're linked, but they're not. I don't think sports should have their own govern governing body. Because if they have their own, then that's where corruption becomes a massive problem. Um, I mean, you think, if WRC had their own governing body, they might favour Toyota, they might favour Ford, they might favour Hyundai. If they've got someone else, like granted, if Formula 1 had their own governing body, Red Bull would be winning every race. Guaranteed. So at least having the FIA makes it a little less, you know, favoritism. However, again, there's no requirement for Formula One to have the FIA. They could have a different governing body or what, whatever. So I, I genuinely think Formula One is in its corrupt ways that it has been for a while, is properly trying to twist stuff around with Red Bull and whatnot. Because there are... I mean, why would they delay that cost cap reading? Why would they delay it? Like, if Red Bull has gone over the cost cap, they should be disqualified. Sergio Perez should be disqualified from 2021. And so should Max Verstappen. Because they've had more money put into their cars and that's unfair as much as I don't think it's fair on Max either but that is a problem of Red Bull that Max would have to bring up to Red Bull because that also isn't fair on every other driver which could see Lewis get in his championship that he deserves but at the same time I also think the FIA is partly at fault for this. Because if they're a governing body, why are they letting 
Formula One twist their mind. So, in either scenario, whichever one is true, the FIA is at fault. Because they're either intentionally making these shit decisions, in which case, fuck the FIA, or they're being pressured by Formula One to make these decisions, which I believe is a more likely option. Because the FIA aren't making stupid decisions in Formula E. They're not doing it in WRC. They're not doing it anywhere else. It's just Formula One. So I'm... But also Formula One is the biggest pay in sport. Guaranteed. There's so much money in Formula One that the FIA probably can't afford to lose them. But, again, the FIA shouldn't be cracking to that pressure. You know. It's a very weird situation. And again, I, I do agree that everything requires its own approach. But... When it comes to motorsports and sportsmanship, it's a fairly one-sided story. It's a fairly obvious uh, answer. There's no if, buts, or maybes when it comes to that. So a governing body can govern multiple different motorsports as long as it knows how to do it. And I mean, the FIA have done a great job with WRC, making sure the WRC is fair. There's been times when drivers have had front bumpers that are too light. Um, so that means their car's more powerful than it should be. They got disqualified. Um, there have been times when cars... Uh, I think it was... Um, I think it was in the New Zealand rally. Robin Perra... Uh, Tanak and Thierry Neuville all had um, went over their hybrid power limits. They got a five second penalty. Like, that's fair. That's how it should be. But when it comes to Formula One, the fact that it is more an entertainment and the fact that the FIA just aren't making judgments in time and they're delaying it for. I, I can only imagine they're just delaying it for effect more than anything. And it sucks. Big time. Turn out the lights. And yeah, sim racing is better. I got a bone to pick with sim racing in WRC, though. Uh, I will come back to it in just a moment, though, because I want this on video. Because <laughs> uh, I got a big bone to pick. Uh, so we got 50% discount on ignition upgrades by MSD and 50% on oil and cooling upgrades by Cosworth. Hello. Hello. Uh, uh, oh. Such a tube. So, right. Continued from last clip. <laughs> um, in the... I think it was the Acropolis rally, which would have been um, start of September, about a month ago now. So, I obviously haven't spoken about this. It is what it is. It's happened. There's no change in it. But I think it should be discussed, because I want to discuss it. And I want to get some opinions. But, in the um, eSports final, obviously all the eSports has been done on the computer and they get the four fastest drivers to go to the final at the Acropolis Rally. Um, you have, they air this live and the four drivers all sit down and they start driving. Um, they're playing this on WRC 10. Now, four stages they have uh, on the first stage, one of the drivers um, has a critical fault with his wheel uh, where the pedals just aren't working properly. 
all of his inputs are basically dulled down. So he can't drive properly. And he's like a minute and a half slower than all the other drivers. Something ridiculous. Um, once he's got his wheel all rebooted and everything. Um, they obviously reboot the wheel, reboot everything and go on to stage two. Uh, stage two, he's the fastest driver by about three seconds. Stage three, he's fastest. Stage four, he's fastest. To the point he's gotten himself out of last place into third place by the end, I think. Um, but he doesn't get the win. Now, they obviously, a, a lot of people on the internet has used the reason of, well, it's rallying... It's supposed to be sim racing. It's supposed to be realistic. In real rallying, if something goes wrong, you suck it up and carry on. I think this is a bit of a sketchy situation, though, because when you think about it, all of these rigs have been supplied by the event organizers. So... The event organizers have supplied a rig to use, and the rig has been faulty. That's not a fair competition at that point. Like, by all means, if part of the competition is bring your own rig, use your own rig, and be the fastest driver, then yeah, if your rig had a fault, then maybe you could blame it on your rig. But it's not your rig, it's the event organizers and that's why i think it's a bit of a, a weird situation what what do you chat think cuz honestly it it kind of bugged me a bit because the fact like that is not a fair um i i don't know if the esports was governed by FIA but obviously WRC is is by FIA so um it might be. But I just think that's so unfair to go an entire year training for the event organizer's equipment to fail on you and completely fuck up your race. You know. I don't think that's fair. Like, the bloke who won it was a French guy, has won it multiple times. Like, a, a lot of people were saying it was probably a conspiracy to get the French guy to win. But, um... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, by all means... All they had to do, right, was say, okay, we've had a serious fault with one of the rigs for stage one. We will completely wipe out the results of stage one and everyone starts a clean slate from stage two. Because in an actual rally, if a problem happened with a car... Shadow, thank you for the raid. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, if there was a problem in an actual rally and a car crashed, um, and it was serious enough, they'd red flag it. And then everyone that drove that stage would get a standard time. Everyone would pretty much get the same time. So, you know. <laughs> nah, it's not a dead channel, man. I appreciate it, though. Thank you very much for that raid. da 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 but if they reset for stage 2, then that would be unfair to the other drivers. But why would it? If the other drivers are faster, then they should be able to drive fast on the rest of the stages, you know? Like, if they're looking for the fastest driver over a list of stages, then... You know... Oh, look, we've had to cancel that. That's fine. I'm still the fastest driver here. I'm going to be the fastest in the other three. 
I don't see how that's not fair. Like, even if you were first, and it was like, ah, oh, shit. My time's been cancelled. But if you're the fastest, prove that you're the fastest and be the fastest in all of them. Like, that, that kid that had his time cancelled, he was the fastest. Easily. What, in those final three, he was the fastest in all three stages. So it's it's a very weird situation. Um, yeah, it's it's very strange, and I mean, again, is what it is. It's obviously happened. It's all in the past. I just really hope that that kid keeps on top of his form, and that he can get through to the final next year. Because if he gets through to the final next year and absolutely destroys them, I would be so happy to see that. Like, he got absolutely shafted in 2020. I was about to say 2021. Got absolutely shafted in 2022, but here he is now absolutely destroying the pack in 2023. That would be awesome. There'll be the people who say you're not a good driver if you can't adapt. Well, yeah, that's fair enough. But, I mean, that's like saying, um, what's it called? Oh, I'm going to drive this race in a Bugatti Veyron. and you're going to have a pedal bike. Let's see who wins. If you can't adapt and beat me, that's your own fault. You're a terrible driver. You know. Like, it's an obvious handicap, what he was given. So, again, I can't say he was given because it might not have been intentional, but, you know, he had a handicap from the start. So, you know. We got a 50% discount on anti-roll bars. Woohoo! So, with, with WRC, it, it's not like Gran Turismo. You can't just use a controller and be incredibly fast. Because obviously on Gran Turismo controller you can be really fast and on wheel you can be really fast. With WRC, controller is extremely difficult compared to wheel. Wheel is actually the easier option. I, I will 100% say, like, getting used to me playing WRC on wheel was a lot easier than getting used to me playing it with controller. But when you get it right and you understand it, controller is a million times faster. So there are a lot of people out there that play WRC that don't bother actually trying controller and just say, oh yeah, it's shit. Uh. Meanwhile, I'm one of those people, there are a couple of people on Reddit that I've spoken to that um, all play on controller and they absolutely blitz stages on controller. I can destroy people on wheel with a controller because wheel is a lot harder to get it's like um what's it called wheel is easy to learn hard to master controller is hard to learn but once you learn it it is so easy to master and, like, you can start setting some blistering times on stages. It's like the complete polar opposite. Um, and, yeah, there, there are obviously people who will just... It's, it's the one thing that I hate about, like, gaming communities in general. Is the fact that if something is hard, people just give up too easily. Uh, granted... For me, with Gran Turismo, I have tried many, many times in Gran Turismo 7 to get golds on some of those events, and it's just too difficult. That, I've tried a relative amount that I can give up on. But people will do, like, one or two stages and be like, yeah, fuck this. I can't do this. Straight away. And they just give up. Like, I properly, like, tried grinding, got better and better, and then learned. 
sort of how to, you know, go fast on these stages. It took about a year or so. I can fucking storm stages. Except on the Steam Deck. For some reason, I can't get my head around the Steam playing it on the Steam Deck yet. Because it still blows my tiny brain. <laughs> what? A full-size rallying game on a little handheld? No way. <laughs> now Not bad. I do think it's good that um, WRC, uh, not WRC, Gran Turismo has actually added the Rallycross track on Circuit Catalonia. The one thing I would like to see is maybe for their next um, circuit, they can add like Abu Dhabi as a circuit to Gran Turismo. That would be a cool circuit to have in Gran Turismo, first of all, because there are multiple different layouts. You've got the smaller layouts, the bigger layouts, so it works for everything. But also, that has a rallycross track. So you could have, in one update, they could add a rallycross track, a small track, a big track, and another small track in one update. Oh, they're, technically they're not tracks, they're layouts, but, you know. Like, Dubai genuinely is, like, a absolute goldmine of a track. Brands Hatch would... Uh, actually, Brands Hatch already exists. But Brands Hatch could do with a rallycross track, because they have a rallycross circuit. I can see why these cars were stolen quite a lot. They are awesome. The RS200 is such a nice car. Look at it. What a beauty. This is the Evolution one, though, isn't it? Because that one's got, like, the hood scoop and everything on. To think that this game had it... it like, again, this is another one. Gran Turismo is just in a weird place where it's completely disconnected from its player base. It is. I... The thing is, I have never seen a game be that disconnected. Like, I understand Japanese developers are very, take a lot of pride in their work, and they don't, like... They like creativity, they don't like being told what to do. But I cannot believe how disconnected the Gran Turismo developers are to their community. Like, completely. I know for a fact, though, right, because of how bad Gran Turismo 7 has done, I'd, I wouldn't be surprised if Gran Turismo developers have just given up on it and are starting to work on GTA. I would not be surprised. And they're just using the majority of the development in terms of, like, the engine and that to then just transfer that forward into uh, GTA. And then for Gran Turismo 8, we'll have a completely native PS5 game and it will have, like, all the cars, some extra cars, and it will have an actual progression. Like GT6 did. Yeah, you know. I am kind of curious if, um, because Evolution Studios was going to make, like, a sim version of Drive Club. And I'm kind of curious what would happen to Gran Turismo if Drive Club actually did that and PlayStation approved it. 
It's obviously why Evolution got shut down, because they wanted to develop um, Watchamajig, so. 50% discount on valves and displacement. Ooh! Oh, I got something in my eye. Ah! Woo! Systematic, can't react it. A chain reaction. Boom, 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 boom. Seems to be downloading pretty quick, actually. But yeah, Gran Turismo developers are completely... Though, to be fair, Forza developers are becoming quite disconnected as well. They're doing the dumbest shit ever. Like, I really want Forza to just go... Just need a racing game that doesn't become repetitive like Forza and Gran Turismo are. I will agree. Um, Forza Motorsport, up until about 4... Um never felt repetitive for me because I was always doing different cars on different tracks. Gran Turismo really messed up because of the fact that the events were all basically the same thing. Like, they were all Sunday Cups. They were all uh, Clubman whatever. You ended up with a fairly similar restriction for all of them. To the point you could, for quite a considerable amount of time, take the same car on every single track. You weren't forced to have a variety. There wasn't any one-make races. It was fairly similar. And that's the problem I had with Gran Turismo. It took me a while to realise it and admit it that Gran Turismo 7 actually was a pretty crap game. But it is a pretty crap game. I'm just waiting for the announcement that Forza Motorsport 8 has been delayed. I know it's going to be delayed. Like, there's no way that they're going to release it in the middle of the year. Forzas have always released fairly late for the past 10 plus years. I don't see why they'd change it all of a sudden just for... I think they just want to showcase it and then delay it. I think the problem was that a lot of GT7's advertising was very much saying, oh look, this game, we're going back to the roots of what people enjoyed back in GT4. And we all got excited. Granted, we overhyped it. Easily. But the problem is, right, when it comes to GT4, it's a very basic game, but we all enjoyed it. Because there was a variety of different stuff. There was one-make races. There was mission races. There was this. There was that. Granted, it was difficult. But it was all there. And then all of a sudden... For some reason, in the development cycle, they decided... Here's the world map. We're just going to throw random events everywhere. You want to do a championship? Where you've got these three races to do? Yeah, you need to go to this side of the map, and then this side, and then this side. Like, you couldn't just click on an event and like, Ah, you've got three races in this event. Do it. I, I'm going to be totally honest. I think EA, what they've done with Need for Speed, as long as the game actually is pretty good... I think they've done the best advertising campaign ever. 
leaving it till later. Like, we, we've had no announcements about Need for Speed. We didn't know the game was going to be delayed at all. They didn't have an intention of telling us, oh, yeah, Need for Speed 2021's actually been delayed till 2022. Because they didn't announce the game even existed. And then they just showed up a reveal trailer a couple of days ago. And, oh, yeah, the game's coming out in two months, by the way. And then, obviously, there are leaks. But if you ignore the fact that leaks happen... Because, technically, leaks are just rumours. Until there is an official statement from a developer, you can't trust the leak. So, no matter what, that those leaks aren't true hype. It's once they reveal the game, that's when the hype really begins. I don't think it's concerning that they've left it. I think it's good. Because if a game is ready... Right? Obviously, we need to see it. If we see it, and the game's actually good then maybe we have the ideal way for advertising going forward. But, like, if Cyberpunk, for example, they didn't even... Cyberpunk was in a difficult position because they announced um, a reveal trailer in, like, 2013 for the game. I don't think they left it late, and here's the reason why. Whenever you've got a game coming out, right, it gets hyped up immediately right you then have a long time to wait that wait feels like forever the game's not coming and by the time the game comes out that hype starts to die down the less the longer you have that hype there the better it is both for the companies and for the consumers like i kid you not gran turismo 7 we were waiting for ages that got announced and it took two years for it to come out after it had been announced. And I kid you not, that two years was so annoying. To the point the game genuinely got completely forgotten about. All the hype was gone. And by the t time the game came, was coming out, it was like, oh yeah, Gran Turismo is coming out this week. And then the hype starts building up just a little bit. I think it should be later. I think it's better if we don't hear about the game at all until it's ready. We shouldn't hear at all about the game from an official source until the game's ready. The GT7 data mining leaks piss me off so much because they're holding back content for the sake of keeping players over a longer time. <laughs> I think it makes sense that they do it that way so that the content comes out slowly. Because if it comes out all in once, you, you then have no reason to play the game in, in the future. I understand why they're withholding some content. And if they are planning what I think would like them to be planning, if they're planning on bringing out a gr GT8 where they completely just fix up all the problems of the game then a result i guess means it keeps the game alive until the next game comes out that was a problem i found with need for speed is the game the last games always completely die out before the next generation comes out forza does an amazing job at keeping itself alive up until the next generation Yeah, I'll agree with you on that one. If if we're going based off of uh, timelines and like patterns, next month there's going to be a new track completely. If we're going off of patterns. Ha! <coughs> 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 huh. Woo! You're the only girl my heart beats for.
But uh, when it comes to... It, let's go back to Cyberpunk. So Cyberpunk announced that Cyberpunk was a thing and in development back in 2013 or 2014. They did a reveal trailer. And so they had obviously been developing it for last gen systems, but the game became much bigger than it was. They announced it in 2019 and it ended up releasing in 2020 and it wasn't ready. Now, if they hadn't announced the game at all, right, to the point we wouldn't know about it, there could have been rumors and whatnot. But we wouldn't officially be able to say, yes, that's what it is, until the official sources said, Cyberpunk is coming. Now, if they had this amazing game and then they released it or released a trailer when the game was ready, yeah, it was mismanagement. But I think it's mismanagement based off of modern day as well. It's just that was so bad that it's making us realize that it's not the right way to do things. But you think about it, Forza does the same thing. Every single game developer does the same thing as what Cyberpunk did. But they've just done it, Cyberpunk did it too quick. Dakar Rally, Dakar Desert Rally has done exactly the same as what Cyberpunk did. Except it didn't have any delays. But they announced the game, they hyped it up way before it came out, and then once it comes out, ah, oh, it's shit. Because the game wasn't ready. Like, a game... I would be more happy not knowing a game existed, and then a month before it's supposed to release, they announce it and say... Or maybe two months. Two months, I think, is a good option. Because that gives people enough time to plan it into whatever. I understand the yearly events that they do, like E3. To sit down and announce a load of games is quite exciting. Yeah, fair enough. But to announce a game that's coming out in a year's time... Just completely misses the point of hype. It's pointless. And then puts pressure on a developer. If they don't even announce the game until the game is ready, they got no problem. They can spend as long as they want because they know, oh yeah, well, we need to delay the game by six months. That's fine. Only we know about the game anyways. Nobody's going to be disappointed. Other than the board or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. But when you're waiting for a game that you don't know what it is, you don't know what the game is. You can't get, you know, nervous, anxious, whatever, whatever the term is. Ants in your pants waiting for the game to come out because you don't know what it is. But as soon as you know about Cyberpunk, you're like, ah, oh, what? Is there any new updates for Cyberpunk? No. Is there new updates for Cyberpunk? No. It was literally eight years after that first initial trailer before Cyberpunk came out. You know, imagine that. Granted, the game was completely different to what that initial trailer was, but still, eight years is a ridiculous time frame. And granted, right now, Cyberpunk is a very good playable state. So... If they had have not announced that game at all, and then today said, introducing Cyberpunk 2077, and then in two months' time release the game, no one would complain. Because we've seen this amazing Marvel masterpiece game that is coming out. And to be honest, we'd still be quite shocked... And the best bit is the game's coming out in two months. You know, it's it's a perfect scenario.
I think the only reason that people were annoyed that they didn't announce anything for Need for Speed was because of the fact that people knew that Need for Speed was coming. But a lot of people expect a trailer like six, seven, eight months before a game comes out and they believe that that's when a game should be ready. It's not true. You think WRC Generations has been announced for months? Four or five months now? We've had gameplay on the internet for the past two or three months from content creators. The game doesn't come out for another month. I've been waiting forever for this game. Mate, WRC 10 have barely been out before they announced Generations. Ridiculous. Stupid. It's a good song. And I got my money. Got my moolah. Oh, we're going to be going to really fast cars now. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out.